Hey, welcome to this uh, mini lecture on introduction to branding. Uh, I'm just going to define uh, the term branding. It's a name, design, symbol, or combination of elements that identifies, distinguishes a product or service from its competitors. It also identifies the company's product, uh, family of related products or all products. Uh, brands, uh, there are, brands play different roles in marketing strategies. Here are seven. Uh, helps to establish an image, build product recognition, differentiate the product from competitors, add value to, to a product, offer a standard of quality, capitalize on brand exposure, and creates customer loyalty. So again, brands play multiple roles in marketing. Uh, a brand name is the spoken part of a brand, so like you say out loud to your various publics and customers. It helps to distinguish a product from its competitors, such as, you know, I'm sure you've heard of Barbies, Big Macs, Pepsis, and Pop-Tarts. There are various elements of a brand. It's not just a uniform, singular thing. There's a trade name. That's how the corporate brand identifies and promotes a company or a division of a company. So, you know, you have Apple, Nike, or Tesla. That's the actual trade name. A brand mark is a unique symbol, color, or lettering, or other design used for the brand, such as, yeah, I'm sure you've all seen the Nike swoosh. There are also trade characters. That's a brand mark with human form or characteristics, think of something like the Keebler Elves. And finally, trademarks, that's a word, name, symbol, device, or combination of elements, such as, for example, for McDonald's, you have the symbol of the golden arches. So that's an element of that brand. Uh, the different type, again, different types of brand. There's a national brand. It is initiated and known by national companies that provide products and services and is used to attract customers. So think of big brands like Ford, Hershey, or Whirlpool. They're also private brands. These are developed and owned by wholesalers and retailers. Like it's like a in-store brand. It's helped to you. It's helped uh, helps to to you be used to boost profit and build customer loyalty. So such uh, think of uh, such um, private brands as uh, Costco's Kirkland or Walmart's George. There's generic brands. These are products without a company identity. Uh, one of the good things about them is that their prices are a little bit lower. For example, they're normally priced 30 to 50 percent lower than national brands and 10 to 15 percent lower than private brands, such as like a generic pancake mix or paper towels. You can use uh, uh, brands and very uh, to fulfill various uh, corporate strategies. One is a brand extension. That's where you use an existing brand name to to promote a new or improved product in a company's product line. For example, Ocean Spray extended its cranberry juice line by adding cran apple, cran grape, and cran cherry. Uh, there's also brand licensing. That's where companies allow other organizations to use their brand, brand marker, or other trade characters, such as a knife, uh, the NFL's licensing, licensing arrangement with Pepsi, Visa, etc. Some other brand strategies include mixed brands. That's where you offer a combination of national, private, and generic brands to sell products. For example, you, you, there's Michelin Tires. Michelin manufactures its own brand of tires and then sells them at Sears under the Sears brand name. And finally, it's co-branding. This combines one or more brands in the manufacturer delivery of a product or service. For example, at the uh, Barnes & Noble book ch bookstore chain, there's an agreement between Barnes & Noble and Starbucks to have coffee shops within the bookstores. So that's a co-branding exercise. That was an introduction to branding. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.